Hey traders, so first on our list is the copper gold chart and basically this is an indication of the economic conditions around the globe. If we have really strong economic growth, you can see copper outperforming gold as the demand for copper would be much higher for gold. Gold being a safe haven asset, copper being more of a production asset. So when the economic conditions are correct for economic growth, you can see copper outperforming and when things aren't as good then you see gold start to outperform copper. This is another indication of inflation as kind of economic growth does spur inflation and when copper is outperforming gold, you can expect prices to be on the rise. And that's exactly what we've seen kind of heading into the 2009 financial, 2007, 2008 financial crisis, that period. Even before that, we started to see a drop in copper versus gold and then we saw that massive drop heading into the GFC. Then around about this region here, we saw the uh, first round of QE come into play and everyone talking about those inflationary conditions and inflation starting to be an issue. And exactly what we saw was what I believe we're seeing at the moment was a short term run up in those conditions in that inflationary expectation before heading into kind of nine years of deflationary um, conditions. And now I think that's exactly what we're seeing next. What we've seen now is another push up in those inflationary expectations and then moving forward, whether it's going to be because the Fed has to write, uh, hike rates as a result of that inflation or we're going to go straight back to that deflationary environment as a result of lack of growth, uh, basically as a result of economic policy or Fed policy that is just ineffective. Uh, so it's whether it's going to be one of those two things, we're not sure, but the chart is really suggesting we're heading back to those conditions of a deflationary environment where gold outperforms copper and we saw we see this copper gold chart fall to the downside. There's obviously still possibility of a little bit more upside. The full target of this move is around about the 0, 0, 0035 region, but the chart has done enough. We are sitting at a region at that minimum target zone where we could start to see a turn to the downside already. And when you go to the lower time frames and what we saw after the Fed meeting, we've seen already a little bit of a dip down from those highs and a potential head and shoulders forming in that region as well. So it's worth taking note, not saying we're already there, we're going to see the dip happen right now, but a couple of things are showing me that we are seeing that dip already. Obviously, those conditions are very kind of dollar positive if we do see that deflationary environment or the Fed hiking rates, whichever it's going to be. And as you guys know, if you've been with me a while, you know we are dollar bulls uh, from kind of here on out. It could be possible that we see a little bit more downside first before we see a really strong rally uh, to the upside. We may see a break of kind of this 87 region. The full target of this move is actually 87 before we see a turn to the upside. But like I said, we have done enough. We have crossed those minimum levels and what we call the median levels. So we're definitely in an area where we could start to see a turn to the upside. And when you go and you zoom in and you see what we're seeing, especially this last week, you're seeing a really, really strong bull candle having formed after what looks like a series of bottoming candles. So it's very possible we've seen a turn in the dollar and we're heading back towards that dollar bull environment that we've been calling for basically since the beginning of the year in January, which you can go back and see that video uh, of our 2021 market preview, what we expect from 2021. That's exactly what we're seeing now. And what you do have and a lot of market participants calling for is this inverse head and shoulders that's formed. And if this line breaks, you can expect a lot of technical traders to start to get along the dollar. And then you can expect the CTAs to follow, et cetera. Um, and then you see those dollar shorts unwind and that dollar short squeeze is what we suspect will push the dollar much higher than people suspect uh, as the dollar short positioning unwinds and that kind of inflationary uh, mindset and money printing mindset kind of fades as we start to see the dollar rally once again. And we're seeing the same in the euro. We saw a really big dump. And again, you have a little bit of a head and shoulders type structure forming at these highs here where you can see a really clean left shoulder and head and right shoulder really starting to look like it's forming at the moment. We're not classical chart of patterns. 
or classic traders. Um, but that is just a good confirmation that we are maybe seeing a turn. And if we are seeing a turn here, and this is the start of the move, you can expect the euro to go kind of subpar heading into 2022, 2023. So you'll see the start of a really, really big euro bear market moving forward. Or it's more of a dollar bull market, really, because you're seeing the same thing across the board. If you look at the pound, the pound should also go to parity. Very, very clean corrective structure here, actually even better than the euro, where we can expect a move down from here. Again, it's possible we still go break the highs of the 2018, kind of 143 before we see that turn, but it's very, very likely, very high probabilities that following that we see a move kind of sub 114, sub 110 moving forward. And then another one is the CAD dollar, which is just the cleanest dollar chart we have at the moment in terms of our charting structure, how we trade price structure. We have a very clean A wave to the downside, nice choppy B wave to the upside, and a very nice C wave to the downside, which is now complete. We broke the lows of 2017, and we've seen a really strong rally following that. So 124.80 at the moment. Um, if you look at these candles, you can just see how bullish that move is. And we expect this to continue moving forward in the US dollar CAD. And we'll see a break of the 2020 highs, 146 from here, which is a really, really big move. So we really suspect that the dollar bull market has come into play. And we started to see that in things like uh, precious metals. Silver, I'm going to go out to the monthly chart on silver just to reconfirm what we spoke about at the beginning of the year, where we can expect silver kind of single figures, $4, $3, somewhere in that region. And that this move has actually started back in 2011. And what we saw uh, this time around was actually just a corrective move for further downside. So as you can see, we had this nice big impulse off the highs 2011. We went into a nice big ABC corrective structure, very, very clean structure, expanding flat, which is a little bit less bearish, but still it's a corrective move for further downside. And then what means what we can expect moving forward is either from here, a move towards sub 10 and then later into single digits, or we can go test the highs at $30, maybe head up towards $35 and then see the turn. So, but when we look at the price action that we've seen over the last few uh, days, you can see how bearish it is. We've just seen a really, really big dump from those levels uh, to the downside. And it's even more prevalent in the gold chart. When we go to the gold, you can guys know if you follow me on Twitter, I was looking for a move up to 1850 and then a big dump from there. We kind of crossed that 1850 level, touched on the 19 area. And then since then, we've just seen a massive dump in gold. Um, obviously not very inflationary because gold's supposed to be an inflationary asset. And from here, we've just seen a massive dump. If we go out to the weeklies, the higher time frames, you can see exactly the same kind of structure we're looking for. And I expect 1250 to be the downside target here, around about 1200, 1250 in that region before we actually see a move to the upside. So gold looking really bearish at the moment. The structure is really, really clean. And we can expect gold to continue selling off, even though a lot of market participants are just saying this is a buy the dip opportunity in gold because of those inflationary conditions. And that just isn't the case. And like we said at the beginning, we expect gold to outperform copper. But at the same time, we're telling you that gold is going to fall to kind of 1250 from here. Then obviously, you can expect a really big dump in copper moving forward. And that's exactly what we have on the cards. Uh, you can expect this to really accelerate to the downside. And we should see copper kind of sub 1.9, 1.9, potentially even testing these lows at 1.26. So that's a big dump from 4.92 down towards 1.27. That's a really, really big move. Um, percentage terms from the highs down to the lows. That is a 70% drop in copper prices, which is obviously very indicative of a negative economic environment. And again, once we zoom into the higher time frames, you can see as we broke the highs of um, the 2011 period, which is exactly when we saw kind of QE, the first round of QE start to lose its, uh, lose its tempo, lose its effectiveness. We went back into that kind of 11 year deflationary environment commodity bear market then we hit those levels once again, those exact same levels. And since then, 
We've just seen a massive drop in these copper prices, as you can see, and we expect that to continue moving forward. And like we said, downside target kind of sub two at the very least, but more likely actually towards a kind of sub uh, 1.8, maybe even as low as 1.4, like we said. So this region down here, anyway, in this region is fair game for copper at the moment, which is a big drop. Another one we're looking at is emerging markets. Obviously, with economic growth and money printing, you can expect emerging markets to rally quite strongly, which is exactly what we saw uh, in our previous crisis. We saw the GFC, the global financial crisis. We saw emerging markets get hit really hard. Then we saw a response from Federal Reserve, where we saw QE and all of those things. We saw a really strong rally to the upside, and then kind of it lost its favor, and things moved sideways in emerging markets from 2011 all the way to 2020. Then once again, we saw this QE kind of rally that we saw back up to those same levels, which we saw in 27, just before the global financial crisis, uh, and kind of the peak of the QE, which was 2011, as we spoke about. Now we're back in that sector now. And because of the structure that we're seeing on the charts, we expect emerging markets to sell off really strongly from these levels. Um, and more than likely, we're going to see um, these kind of 08 levels tested once again, down to 21, which is again, a 60% drop in emerging markets. Um, again, it's gonna be a sell off. I don't think emerging markets have recovered as well as the US. I don't think they have the resources or the economic stability to have recovered from the COVID crisis as well as people suspect that they have. And then you're gonna to start to see these emerging market crises, especially I think Turkey, uh, Mexico, those are the places, Argentina, those are the places I'm really concerned about because they have very little in terms of FX reserves to defend their currencies, which means they're going to have to start printing their own currency, um, which is going to hit them really, really hard. Economic conditions should be really, really tough in those regions. And then once again, when we go into the lower time frames, when we start to look for a topping out, you can see once again, very similar to silver, where we had a big impulse off the highs. We went into this corrective structure, which I believe is going to be an expanding triangle, something along those lines. So you can expect a little bit of a move down towards these lows, a little bit of a recovery, and then a big sell off to the downside from there as the next impulse comes into play. So you can see how emerging markets, once again, are really looking like they're struggling um, and should really start to gain momentum to the downside moving forward. And then from there, we can start to look at emerging market currencies like the Turkish Lira, which has struggled basically since February um, and one of the worst performing emerging market currencies as a result of, again, Erdogan kind of uh, firing his central bank, firing his uh, financial minister, lots of money printing. And already we've started to see that crisis play out in the lira. And what we've seen on the lower time frames is this little corrective structure, which uh, kind of assumes or resembles another move to the upside. And you can expect kind of... Uh, around about 10, uh, over 10 uh, lira, 10 lira to the US dollar um, moving forward, which is kind of worrying for the Turkish lira, uh, which obviously can't afford to have such a weak currency. Um, they obviously have really, really bad um, economic conditions and really, really bad FX reserves uh, in relation to their US dollar debt. So really, really struggling conditions for Turkey, which should continue to play out in a really poor fashion. Then we start to look at something like South African Rand. We spoke about the Rand heading into this 1550, 1350, sorry, to 1375 region before rallying once again from there as this ABC conditions play out. And then if you start to see in the lower time frames, these two really, really big candles on the weekly, very indicative of a turn to the upside from these levels and a return back to dollar strength. And it's again what we saw, exactly what we saw between 2008 and 2011, a little bit of QE, which was very, very strong for emerging market currencies. And once that QE started to fade, we just saw a continuation of the dollar bull market as economic conditions led to really struggling emerging markets. Exactly the same in the Mexican peso, where we can see this ABC corrective structure looks like it may have completed a little bit of a double bottom here. And now we started to see a turn back towards that dollar strength environment uh, after a very, very clean corrective structure has looked like it's completed. And it's exactly what we saw 
back in kind of 2009, you saw this really strong rally higher, then you saw QE come into play, and then back in 2011, you saw things return to normal, basically, as economic conditions took hold and the Mexican peso weakened. That's what we're seeing across emerging markets, and that's why we believe the general market is on the wrong side of this EM bet, because they are still really holding on to that inflationary money printing slash QE narrative, which I believe is starting to fade. And then finally, financials. You can see how financials are in really, really poor state. If we look at the structure of the chart, this is how we trade. We look at the structure and what we're seeing here is a nice impulse of the lows, nice ABC corrective structure, and then another impulse to the upside. And that is a perfect B wave, um, nice long drawn out B wave all the way back from 2009 up to present day. These longer term charts tend to be more accurate. And what that means is what we can expect moving forward is a C wave kind of to match the A wave that we got back in 2009. So you can expect that kind of big recessionary sell off heading into kind of 22, 23, 2024 moving forward, maybe even a little bit longer drawn out when we look at the characteristics of the wave. So um, another couple of charts that are very resembling of that, Morgan Stanley to me is the big one. To me, Morgan Stanley is going to have some kind of massive um, selling off event. It should be a really, really rapid sell off. Uh, you might find they have some kind of over leveraged emerging market bets or something along those lines. And as you can see, we back right to those levels, those 2000 levels where you can expect to see some economic damage taking hold of financials, whether it's raising interest rates, which tends to be pretty negative for, um, for financials or whether what we're seeing is a kind of deflationary environment. So whatever it is, it's going to hit the banks really hard. And again, what we saw this week was potentially the start of those moves as we saw this really big sell-off uh, this week and some big gaps to the downside. It's exactly what we've been waiting for. Again, doesn't necessarily mean this is the top, possibly just part of a corrective structure, which points to a little bit more upside before we see downside, or we're seeing the top now and we're seeing a move to the downside. And another chart, Goldman Sachs, you can see another one that sold off really strongly this week following FOMC. And then when we go to the zoomed out chart on the weeklies, uh, even the monthlies, you can see how this chart is showing that same structure. Where you have this big move to the downside, you have the QE kind of period, um, and then this little B wave structure. And again, what we should see is another A wave to the downside which just uh, kind of really hits Goldman Sachs hard, very much along the same lines of that kind of global financial crisis, a deflationary period, um, whether it's going to be something local or something emerging market-based or just over-leveraged, tons of leverage in the system at the moment, but it does seem like Goldman Sachs and the rest of the financials in the US are going to be hit really hard. So cool guys, as you can see, pretty bearish outlook at the moment. A um, couple of things the market I believe has wrong and we should see this play out over the next few months, next few years, heading into kind of 23, 24. Uh, this is the kind of price action I'm suspecting and really it all has to do with the dollar. And uh, like Val Paul says, dollar is king and we should see the dollar regain its throne and show the markets exactly what it can do. If you guys are looking to learn more about price structure analysis, what I believe to be the most accurate form of technical analysis in the market today, I have just finished up my course, which will basically give you everything you need to know about the process, about reading your charts, learning how to trade, everything you need. So we have the trading room where we run through our daily strategy sessions, our weekly webinars, everything kind of outside of the educational content, learning about the markets global macro environment, things along those lines. We have our traders network. We will get together to discuss ideas and to discuss the markets. Then we have the education series, which is really um, something I'm really proud of. We have our six part education series running through the entire kind of price structure analysis story. You starting with the introduction where we run through how price structure analysis came into being, We're going to the characteristics of price action, really in-depth tutorials on how to set up your charts, how to get things right and lined up for the correct analysis. We're going to all the price patterns, the indicators that we use, the art of trading, 
and finally the three or four strategies that we use to trade and then we go into some bonus material as well which i'll be continually adding into as things progress so really really good course something i'm really proud of so if you are interested in furthering your education even if you are a beginner or an advanced trader every one of my students from beginners to advanced traders has said they really really learned a lot from this course so something i'm really proud of and i hope you can get involved school guys hope you have a great week uh, stay safe and we'll chat again soon